Good afternoon. I'm Ann Trujillo, evening anchor at Denver 7. I am honored to be your MC today for the Denver Health Foundation's third annual Paramedics Award celebration. I have covered Denver News for more than 35 years and can honestly say this year has been one of a kind, right? Not a single person has been unaffected by the events of the past few months. And this is especially true for our first responders, including the Denver Health Paramedic Division. This team has shown up day in and day out to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic, local social justice protests, and wildfires throughout the state and beyond. What an incredible comfort it is to know that we have such a dedicated group of individuals ready to support us when we need them the most. For the next 45 minutes in this virtual setting, the Denver Health Foundation welcomes us to take the time to recognize the heroic efforts of the Denver Health paramedics and all they have done to keep every one of us safe. To start off the celebration, we invite you to stand for the presentation of colors and national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all Thank you to the Denver Health Paramedics Honor Guard and to paramedic Lara Woolley for that beautiful opening to our celebration. I also want to thank our event co-chairs, Josh Hanfling and Christy Eisenberg, who volunteered their time to ensure this event shines for our paramedics. We'll hear from Josh later on in the ceremony. This celebration also would not be possible without the help of the members of our honorary committee and event planning committee, and you can find their names in the program emailed to you earlier this week. Additionally, I'd like to thank the following sponsors for their support. Media sponsor, Denver 7. Frontline sponsors, the Denver Health Trauma Department and UC Health. Guardian sponsors, the Denver Police Foundation, Lifeline Emergency Vehicles and Osage Initiatives. And first responder sponsors, Bill Saslow, Denver Health Medical Plan, General Air, and Rocky Mountain Emergency Vehicles. We'd also like to recognize Dependable Cleaners for providing a generous $50,000 donation to the Denver Health Paramedic Division during the early months of this COVID-19 pandemic. And now I would like to introduce some very special speakers, Governor Jared Polis, Mayor Michael Hancock, and Denver Health CEO Robin Wittenstein. As leaders in our community, each of them brings a unique perspective and will share a few words of thanks for our paramedic division. Hi, I'm Governor Jared Polis. As we come to the end of one of the most challenging years in our memory, I want to applaud the work of the entire Denver Health Paramedics Division for your relentless focus on ensuring our local community's health and safety. 
You were there for us at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic and continue to provide support during our state's recent alarming increase in cases, even when it risks your own health. Denver Health paramedics deserve our thanks for supporting firefighters battling wildfires in Colorado. And we depend on Denver Health paramedics to provide just this sort of care. But we often take your truly heroic work for granted in ensuring our public safety. As governor, I'm constantly reassured by the knowledge that we have upstanding Coloradans like yourselves that are looking out for our communities every day. And on behalf of a grateful state, I wanna say thank you. Today, let's take the time to pause and celebrate our paramedics on the front lines taking care of us no matter what. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Mayor Hancock here. I'm thrilled to take this opportunity to acknowledge the tremendous work of the Denver Health Paramedics. You know, in 2020, as we've all felt and faced this exceptional challenge, it was the Denver Health Paramedics who went to the front line and served and protected the people of this great city, made sure that whatever we needed in terms of protecting our medical and health needs, they were there to provide it. They are truly heroes of the front line when it came to facing the challenges, the ever-changing challenges of COVID-19. And then this summer, as people took to the street to protest social injustice, they were there again with compassion and a sense of duty to provide essential services and resources to those folks who marched in our streets. So it's without question that the great paramedics of Denver Health show up and give everything they can to take care of the people of this great city and those who may be visiting our city. Today, it is really my honor to take a moment to say thank you to them. Thank you for providing such exemplary service to all of us who call this great city home. Thank you very much for your service and thank you for taking care of our people. Hello, I'm Robin Wittenstein, the CEO here at Denver Health. 2020 has been an extremely challenging year for all of us, full of anger, uncertainty, fear, and anxiety. And the impact of COVID on the economic situation of some of the most vulnerable people in our community is only just beginning to be felt. And yet through it all, Denver Health has done what Denver Health always does. We have risen to the challenge. We've been there when people needed us for care, for support, and for hope. And the Denver Health Paramedics Division is one of the most visible symbols of this commitment to our community. Our team rushes in to any situation when somebody is in need to provide that care to provide the hope and support. I am extremely proud and grateful to our paramedics for all of the work they do every day, for their willingness to continue in the face of any situation to do what the city and county of Denver needs us to do. So on behalf of the entire Denver Health family and all of the people who live, work, and play in Denver, thank you. Thank you so much for the work you do every single day. Thank you so much, Governor Polis, Mayor Hancock, and Dr. Wittenstein. As you can tell, Denver Health is the heart of Denver, and their complete care for all pumps and sustains life throughout the city, helping Denver grow healthy and vibrant in all ways. And the Denver Health Paramedic Division exceptionally reflects this commitment to first-class caring. And now I am pleased to begin the awards portion of our celebration. Today, we're recognizing two outstanding philanthropic contributions, a scholarship winner and nine service honorees for their incredible contributions to the safety and well-being of our community. And here to start the award presentation is Dr. Kevin McVaney, Medical Director, Denver Emergency Response System. Hello. And thank you all for taking your time to join us in this important opportunity to thank our paramedics. Uh, I'm truly honored to begin with the Denver Health Foundation's Spirit of Philanthropy Award. In my role as medical director, I'm well aware of the myriad of challenges our first responders faced in this incredibly challenging year. Our system relies on great cooperation and teamwork of the Denver Police, Denver Fire, Denver 911 Communication Center, uh, and public safety. But today is about the Denver Paramedics. And as I think about the Denver Paramedic Division, this year, especially in the early part of this COVID-19 adventure, one thing that really touched my heart 
was the overwhelming community support for our frontline workers. Tens of thousands of meals and thousands of personal protective equipment items were donated from a multitude of different individuals and organizations. Yet one family foundation stood out in particular in their commitment to help our city's first responders by donating over 50,000 meals to feed our teams during the long, difficult days when so much was demanding and uncertain about the pandemic. And let me take a second to reflect on what a meal means. Meals are a tangible representation of support and encouragement. It's a challenging thing to find time to have a meal when you're wearing PPE, uh, and a meal is a great blessing. Uh, but a meal also demonstrates encouragement and support. It lets you know that someone is behind you and that what you do matters. And because of this family's devotion to Denver's frontline workers and the Denver Health Paramedics, I'm honored to present the Spirit of Philanthropy Award to the Tuckman Family Foundation. Let's hear a few words from the family on their decision to support the Denver Health Paramedics in such a compassionate way. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to let you know that Ken and I, while we deeply appreciate the Community Award, most importantly, we want to express our gratitude to you, our frontline workers and emergency services personnel to provide the extraordinary, brave work day in and day out for our Denver community, especially during this unprecedented pandemic it took a can't unimaginable fortitude under such difficult circumstances and not even knowing what you were dealing with. It felt like such a small thing to just give you a little bit of sustenance and maybe make your day a little easier by trying to provide some healthy food. So what we really want to do is express our, our deep gratitude to you for your hard work and dedication day in and day out, and especially during these extremely difficult times. Thank you so much for keeping our communities healthy. We love you guys. Take care. Thank you to the Tuckman Family Foundation. Next is the Jack D. Gabo Paramedic Scholarship. This scholarship was created by Drs. Patty and Hal Gabo to honor Hal's late father, Jack. Jack Gabo was an EMT with impeccable leadership skills and Patty and Hal know that he'd be proud to see the scholarship created and bestowed in his honor. This year's scholarship goes to Sterling Barnes. In the words of Assistant Chief Justin Harper, Sterling clearly stood out as the ideal recipient for this scholarship. Currently a Denver Health EMT, Sterling aspires to join the ranks of the Denver Health Paramedics, and his dedication is evident in his strong work ethic an unwavering drive to help others. As a Colorado native, Sterling has a connection to our community that runs as deep as his commitment to it. Sterling is confident that this scholarship will allow him to advance his career and continue to serve others in meaningful ways. Congratulations, Sterling, on receiving the Jack D. Gabo Scholarship. And now, Denver Health Paramedic Chief Gary Briskevich to continue the award ceremony. Hello, I'm Gary Briskevich. As chief of the Denver Health Paramedic Division for the past four years, I've witnessed countless heroic and selfless acts from my division members. In fact, we established this ceremony in order to honor their incredible efforts. While I'm proud of every single Denver Health Paramedic for the dedication they bring to their work, Today, I'm honored to present nine exceptional individuals with awards for outstanding service. Our first award is the Distinguished Service Cross Award, and I'd like to recognize its recipient, Caleb DeVoe. As you'll see, Caleb exemplifies all that it means to be a Denver Health paramedic. His tenacity and commitment to his work ensures the safety of those he cares for, no matter the circumstance. <music> There's always going to be some things that never change in an inner city. Every night, we're always going to see a couple of shootings, a couple of stabbings, a few people are gonna have a heart attack, a few people are gonna have a stroke. All of that is always going to be the same, regardless of what's going on. So that night, 
was a little bit busier than usual for the time of year. We're dropping a patient off at the emergency room. My partner was delivering a handoff report, telling the doctors and nurses what was going on with the patient so they could start all their treatment. I took our gurney, our pram, bed, whatever you want to call it, over to the ambulance bay, cleaned it off. I was grabbing some sheets and some blankets to put that on there. And I heard a call for help from down the hallway. So I dropped what I was doing and I ran to go and help. Receiving this award makes me feel honored. It's to be recognized by my peers and the staff in the emergency room is something special. It's, I consider this to be a part of my job. I feel like any of the other paramedics would have jumped in given that same exact scenario in that same exact situation. I happened to be there and I happened to be the one who was able to help. Congratulations, Caleb, for a well-deserved honor. And now on to the Paramedicine Award. Jesse Wright joined the Denver Health Paramedic Division four years ago, and since then has embodied every characteristic that we look for in a Paramedicine Award recipient. I can't recall a time when his friendly personality and ready smile haven't served to brighten someone's day, among both his team members and patients alike. Jesse is also an incredibly skilled paramedic who uses his knowledge to consistently provide exemplary patient care and help to new hires, quickly adapting to their roles and responsibilities. It's with all of this in mind that I present the Paramedicine Award to Jesse Wright. Congratulations. Next is the Employee of the Year Award. It's a testament to our Employee of the Year Award, Justin Loera, that a video of him calming down a difficult patient on the street went viral on social media. In the video, Justin never loses his temper, just consistently talks down the patient in a professional manner. This is only one example of why Justin is so deserving of the award. One of his colleagues said it best, Justin is the person who challenges us to increase our knowledge, skills, and patience, and professionalism just by being himself. We're lucky to have him as a coworker and an example. I'm proud to present Justin Loera with the Employee of the Year Award. Our next award presentation features a trio who went beyond caring for their patient's physical health to also look after their livelihood. In these economically challenging times, the actions of Lara Woolley, Nick Churchy, and Leah Johnson are truly commendable and deserving of the Distinguished Service Cross Award. We were dispatched to an MBA off Broadway in Arizona. By DFD had requested us to evaluate a child that was involved in the accident. When we showed up, we did a quick assessment on him. Then we evaluated the dad due to the damage to his car. Found out that he had a seat belt abrasion to his chest as well as his vital signs were not within normal ranges. So that's where we decided that we were gonna have to transport him to Denver Health. During that time, he was worried about all the Amazon packages that was in his car because he was delivering them with his kid. So the dad was pretty worried about his son. He was worried about his packages. I'm sure he was worried about his livelihood. And we just wanted to make sure we tried to ease all of his concerns. And Lara said, hey, let's load up these packages. So we grabbed all the packages. We made sure we got in the trunk, the back seat, the front seat, and took them over to the ER. I just thought it was the right thing to do for the patient. Um, I didn't want them to get stolen and impound. Uh, I didn't want the guy to lose his job. I didn't want people to not have their packages because I know how much people count on Amazon. So I didn't really see any other choice other than loading up all the packages and taking them to the ER. He said his wife would come pick him up and they would deliver him later. Looking back, the more I think about it, we do little things like that for people all the time and we don't realize that it does make their day a little bit better and, you know, they might not remember who we are or who took care of them, but they remember, hey, this person, like, did this little thing for me that helps me tremendously. I know the charge nurse had, like, called our command staff, reached out, and they had, like, did a little kudos scene in an email, so when it had actually 
got to the point where we were nominated for the award, I was taken back that it reached that far up and was actually chosen by the committee. I was pretty surprised because I didn't see it as any big deal. I just thought I was doing the right thing for the patient, uh, which is what I try to do on most of my calls. So it was, it was kind of a shock. It's nice to be recognized always, yeah. Congratulations, Lara, Nick, and Leah on your Distinguished Service Cross Award. Our next awardee is from the Denver Police Department. We are presenting Officer Pat Smith of the 5th Police District, the Legion of Merit Award for his quick actions in responding to a gunshot trauma. Officer Smith was the first on the scene of a shooting and immediately noticed that the victim was bleeding from his femoral artery. Without time to wait, Officer Smith applied a life-saving tourniquet and administered care until the Denver Health paramedics arrived. Without his actions, the patient would not have survived. For his excellent use of EMS skills and exceptional decision-making under pressure, I am pleased to present the Legion of Merit Award to Officer Pat Smith. Up next is the incredible story of a young man who acted quickly and fearlessly to save a life. I'm honored to present Jake Pucci with the second Legion of Merit Award. I'm at 3100 Huron Street. Uh -huh. um, and we just heard a lot of gunshots and screaming um, at the street behind us. It was 11.40 on a uh, Wednesday. I was on a phone call with my father, everything was completely normal, and then I watched this guy, unfortunately, get shot down in the alley. Two people are down. Two people got shot. Two people got shot, yes. As soon as he got shot, I kind of just didn't even think. I just reacted. I ran down there as quickly as I could. When I got down there, I just, my training just kind of kicked in. I started checking for more wounds besides the obvious. I did find three gunshot wounds that were more blood than I've ever seen <laughs> coming out of someone, unfortunately. Um, I uh, applied a belt tourniquet. At that point, a random woman showed up. She turned around the corner of the alley, and she was in scrubs completely. And I grabbed her hand with mine, and I was like, here, we're going to hold these wounds. We're going to apply pressure as hard as we can, as long as we can. And yeah, once she was on it, I was able to kind of stand up, think about it for a second, and then I looked to my right and noticed that further down the alley, there was another victim, uh, a woman. A police officer was sitting with her. Uh, I went over there just for a second to see if there was anything I could do, but uh, unfortunately, uh, she had already passed away. It was actually at that moment that I turned the corner and I, thought I, saw, I found my dad, or so my dad found me. Uh, we had last talked when he heard gunshots and I just hung up on him. Uh, so he turned the corner and kind of just started tearing up uh, and he just saw me covered in blood, so he was a little afraid. I hugged my dad and I kind of realized like the severity, the intensity of the situation all together. I think first responders who are doing this every day, I think it's unbelievable. Truly unbelievable that people are doing this every day. One of my paramedic instructors, Andy Wright, he talked about how powerful it is to grab someone's hand as they're fading away, as they have that look of impending doom. He talked about how powerful it is to tell them you're going to be okay and I got to experience that firsthand. And that overwhelmed, to say the least, absolutely overwhelmed, uh, empowered. I feel like this was a sign from God that I should pursue what I've wanted to do for a very long time. Congratulations, Jake, for receiving the Legion of Merit Award. I can't wait to see what the future has in store for you. Our final two awards recognize a single outstanding individual. Steve Watson has been with the Denver Health Paramedic Division for five years and exactly the special type of paramedic who had received two merit awards in one year, the Training Officer of the Year Award and the Medal of Valor Award. The Training Officer of the Year Award is given to a paramedic who works hard to ensure our standards of clinical excellence and compassionate care are passed along to all new hires. If a new hire is having a challenging time adapting or understanding the requirements of the Denver Health Paramedic Division, Steve can be relied on to help them. In our experience, instead of letting them flounder, he has taken the time to mold them into some of the most successful paramedics in the division. 
Steve is passionate about his job and wants only the best for every trainee, which makes him the ideal recipient of the Training Officer of the Year Award. Steve is also being recognized today with the Medal of Valor Award. It's not often that you meet someone exceptional enough to talk a distressed individual down from a bridge, but Steve has managed to do this twice. Here's a look at what happened during one of those incidents, showing exactly what led to his award nomination. Congratulations, Steve, on your well-deserved Medal of Valor Award. In August of this year, 2020, the Inglewood Police Department requested us to come help them with a mental health crisis, a person having a mental health crisis. Uh, individual was like possibly standing on a bridge. When we got there, we found the individual he was in fact on the bridge. The Inglewood Police Department was like trying to, you know, have a dialogue with him. They're, they're trying to talk to him. And I told the police officer I would, I would happily try and talk to him. And, and he sort of obliged by that and, and, and I stepped up to the sidewalk and I started trying to talk to him and, and he was clearly having a bad day. He didn't want anything to do with me. Uh, very erratic, um, very emotional and I'm trying to initiate uh, you know, a conversation and he's not having it and he c continually tells us I want to die, I want to die, don't try to, don't try to save me. So I go back to my co-workers of the Denver Fire Department and I tell them I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically lunge for him at one point. I don't know when that is, <clears throat> but if you don't mind coming to help when I do it. And they say, okay. And I start walking back out and he comes even more erratic. And I'm trying to calm him down, trying to calm him down. He's not having it. My true fear is that at some point he's gonna slip. So I finally am able to get myself within probably four or six feet. I'm watching, I'm watching, and at one point he almost slips. So I decide it's time to go. I lunged as fast as I could, and I pinned his arm up against the bar. Uh, the Denver Fire Department, along with some Inglewood police officers, uh, hastily r run over, grab him, and sort of rip him over the rail and secured him to the ground at that point. People in crisis, whether it be hanging from a bridge or, or dealing with any victim of violence, um, to all of the mental health issues we're dealing with uh, throughout the city, we're just to, to be there for everybody, you know, as a service. I mean, this is exactly what we're here to do. We 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 seriously signed up to do exactly what we're doing. We're out there, you know, touching people's lives every day. And, and I think at the end of this whole thing, you you did something that helped people. Wow, we all know that it takes an extraordinary person to be a first responder, but these stories really capture just how dedicated these individuals are to caring for everyone in our community. So congratulations, Caleb, Jesse, Justin, Lara, Nick, Leah, Pat, Jake, and Steve. And thank you, Chief Briskevich, for presenting the awards. Up next, Josh Hanfling, one of the co-chairs of the Paramedics Award Celebration, would like to invite each of you to be a springboard for Denver's health. Hello, as co-chair along with Christy Eisenberg of this year's Paramedics Award Celebration and the board chair of the Denver Health Foundation, I'm pleased to highlight the special work of our paramedics. But this event also serves as a way to invite you to support this amazing group of people. For over 160 years, Denver Health has taken on every challenge, delivering health, social, and economic solutions every day and for every person. And in 2020 for the paramedics, that dedication to our community led to unexpected expenses as a result of the pandemic, the protests, and the wildfires. For example, after transporting a suspected COVID-19 patient, each paramedic is required to change their shirt in case the virus transferred to their clothing. This can mean upwards of four shirt changes per shift, and most of the team did not have the extra shirts they needed. Donors like you ensured that a large order of shirts could be quickly placed so that our paramedics didn't have to shoulder that extra cost on their own. Your support today will help with some simple needs like that, but also with larger needs like advanced training equipment and specialized field devices. If you'd like to support our Denver Health paramedics, please text paramedics to the number on your screen, or go to our website at denverhealthfoundation.org or reach out to me to make any donation of any amount. 
Your gift today means that our paramedics receive extra resources and needed items that they would not be able to purchase out of their normal operating budget. Thank you in advance for your support. Again, text paramedics to the number of your screen or reach out in any way to help make a difference. Now we'd like to share a final video before the close of our ceremony. The previous videos have shown the heroic stories in some of our awardees, but since this year has been particularly challenging, the Denver Health Foundation wants to acknowledge the entire division for all they've done. As you watch, please join me in saluting the Denver Health Paramedic Division for their dedication to caring for our city. Thank you very much. West 36th Avenue, somebody just got shot in the alley. Most of us became paramedics because helping people is exactly what we signed up to do. And, and if 2020 didn't put you in that position, I guess it'll never happen. You couldn't have a more profound year for helping people. It's been an extraordinarily challenging year. We've had great fluctuations in our normal call volume and the normal calls that we see. With COVID, everything had slowed down a little bit. Some of us know a little bit about virology in the paramedic division, but we've been getting a lot of education about that, a lot of how disease processes and pathology works. So we can help these people, we can give them more information. If they need to go to the hospital in the ambulance, we take them in the ambulance. the riot from you know late May to today. And I think that our paramedics did this incredible job. We were actually sitting at Civic Center Plaza, basically shoulder to shoulder with the police officers, dealing with all of the chaos and all of the insanity. They put helmets on, they put gas masks on, they wore ballistic riot gear. And we're gonna help everybody on both sides. A police officer's injured, we're right there to take him to the hospital, as well as people who are injured from on the other side. So we picked up people who were injured, shot, stabbed, and, and drove them out of these uh, you know, very dynamic scenes. And I think it was this most eye-opening thing I've ever been a part of. On top of all that, we have now have a number of our paramedics are out on wildland fires. We're really lucky here. We have an excellent relationship with Denver Fire. They go with us and help us out on a lot of the medical calls. We go and help them out on fire calls. So those of us that are still here have to work just a little bit harder or work some extra shifts to try and backfill for them because they're out helping other people. I think your team is really important. Your partners are really important. They lift you up, they get you through the day. They help make sure that you're always doing the right thing. Even when maybe it can be a struggle for you that day, you're tired, you had stuff going on at your own house. You're not feeling like maybe being here 100% and your partner is important to keep you safe and just get you through the day, get you through the hard times. I'm glad that we can bring some attention to what the paramedics do. At the end of the day, somebody has to come and do these jobs. I, I'm truly like, and deeply appreciative of every single person that, you know, that I stand next to, whether it be a police officer, a firefighter, an ER nurse, a, another paramedic, you know, King Super's employee, somebody, it, it, anybody that continues to wake up every day and go to the work in this sort of insanity sometimes. I'm, I'm, I'm just humbled by all of them. So, hero, I don't, I don't know about that, but humbled, probably. I think this year, 2020, I think everybody definitely deserves a medal that works in EMS, the police, fire. It's been a really tough year for everybody.
As you can tell from the stories we've seen today, we're surrounded by humble individuals who go about their jobs with quiet dignity and compassion, saving lives without asking for anything in return. How lucky we are to have them in the ranks of the Denver Health Paramedic Division. Again, if you'd like to join with us to provide first-class caring that moves Denver forward, you can do so by texting paramedics to the number on your screen or by going online to denverhealthfoundation.org. To all of our paramedics and other first responders watching today, we cannot thank you enough for your service. And to all of you who have tuned in for our virtual celebration, we thank you for generously supporting our Denver Health Paramedic Division. You are the foundation of Denver's health. And on behalf of the entire Denver Health Paramedic Division, I wish you a good rest of your afternoon. Take care and please stay safe and healthy.